Hello. <laughs> um, and a very warm welcome to uh, YASPIS and to Practice International Stockholm Assembly. Uh, before I start to introduce the project and my collaborators, I just wanted to say something about where we are right now. Uh, YASPIS is a support structure for uh, artists in relationship to international contact and dialogue in various ways. And the conversations that we host here as part of our public program um, aim to be to create a space for peer-to-peer uh, -peer exchange. So exchange between artists and others active within the field. Uh, different from the academic context and also different from the context of public uh, art institutions, as we don't have uh, an assignment to um, be here for a general public, but specifically for the artistic community. And with this, why I'm saying this is because uh, we really try to have conversations here that feel generous and uh, allowing for uh, both uh, comments, questions, critique, and exchange on all levels. So a very warm welcome to you. Um, my name is Lisa Rosendahl, and I'm the director of YASPIS. And next to me are my collaborators in this project, Bina Choi from CASCO in Utrecht, and Grant Watson from INIVA, Institute for International Visual Arts in London. Uh, Practice International is a two-year collaborative project and uh, this conference is our first moment of public discussion preceded by non-public meetings and discussions held in London and Dakar earlier this autumn. The aim of the Stockholm Assembly is to open up our research to the public, to continue thinking together, get feedback, input and criticism. The next two years will include moments of exhibition and publication and quite possibly a concluding seminar reflecting on the research that has been generated. But for now, for today, we are opening up our field of inquiry to share it with you in its beginning stages. So uh, our main question today concerns internationalism and how to understand this idea in relation to contemporary visual arts. As an introduction, Grant, Bina and I will each offer some thoughts on our entry points into this topic and how we have jointly decided to address it as part of the project. At YASPIS, international exchange is at the top of the agenda. YASPIS, as part of the governmental agency, the Swedish Arts Grants Committee, is a program for the internationalization of artists working within the visual and applied arts. That means we support and facilitate professional exchange between artists based in Sweden and the international art world. The goals are twofold, to increase working opportunities for artists and to support artistic development. Our methods include systemic and non-systemic support. We set up networks for international exchange through our residency programs, public activities and partnerships worldwide. But equally important is our direct economic support for which artists can apply who have found their own collaborators and contexts internationally. Since YASPIS uh, was started in 1996, the art world, both in Sweden and internationally, has changed significantly. There has been a proliferation of platforms for international exchange, such as artist residencies, biennials and art fairs. Young artists often have extensive international networks already when they graduate from art school, which wasn't the case in Sweden 15 years ago. The art academies are now characterized by international professors on the one hand, as well as by international initiatives for standardizing education, such as the Bologna process on the other. To work internationally, and in extension, to be or to appear international, 
has become a precondition for being perceived as a professional artist today. But how global is the global art world? The statistics published by art market analysts as well as public bodies such as the Arts Grants Committee show that the majority of international economic activity within the field of visual arts occurs within Europe and the US with Asia on the increase but still far behind. Global art is following global capital. Furthermore, if the institutionalized frameworks and modus operandi of the international art world are mainly modeled on the Western concepts of art and artistic subjectivity, no matter if the museum or biannual or artist residency is located in Sharjah, Shanghai or Stockholm, should we in fact understand contemporary art as an export scheme, rather imperial in character, of certain modes of being and exchanging? In which case, how should we understand the role of artists, curators and institutions? The central question of this project from my perspective is, what is my role as curator, artist or institution in the complicated matrix of global capital and relations and how is this manifest in the ways I work? In terms of YASPIS, what tools do we use to work internationally and to support international exchange? What types of relationships and forms of exchange do these tools generate? How have they been developed historically and what ideologies, past and present, do they perpetuate? There is a general celebration of the international that tends to focus on the ease with which we all supposedly can circulate the globe and trade our goods and ourselves to an infinite and infinitely equalizing market. In the midst of this celebration, which puts diverse nationalities at the forefront as a way to construct global success stories, questions characterized by unease, like class and gender, where very little has changed in a global perspective within the field of art, tend to disappear from view. So what function does the artistic subject have within this celebratory globalism? Are we witnessing the rise of the contemporary artist as an international subject par excellence, professionalized to smoothly translate cultural content from all corners of the world to a global audience, using contemporary art as a language constructed to be read across cultural barriers in order to normalize conflict and difference. Together, we wanted to raise the question of what it means to practice internationally by focusing on artists that in different ways position their practices critically in relation to the idea of the global. We felt a need to articulate different positions and narratives of what we do than the mantra of mobility, productivity and circulation that is celebrated by the market and bureaucracy alike. How do we de-align from that rhetoric while still maintaining the importance of transnational affinity and collaboration? How do we articulate a vocabulary and a set of concerns that more accurately describes how we, as artists, curators and institutions, want to engage internationally. We have invited artistic practices that exemplify ways of working and connecting to the world that offer other approaches to the idea of internationalism than the logic of the market or governmental systemic exchange. Many of them work with different forms of self-organization through which a space from where to speak is constructed, allowing for a high degree of influence over the conditions for how to practice as well as how to exchange with others. Keynote speakers Lila Gandhi and Christian Kravagna will speak about their research into historical precedents and how they might resonate with our present moment. Jaspis, Casco and Ineva are present in the discussion as examples of institutional organizations that have been born 
out of different needs created by the global condition and which now have joined forces to reflect on their ways of working and what the future might bring. Uh, so before I hand over to Grant and Binna, I would like to thank all the conference contributors and speakers who are here today. Uh, and also Cheyenne Chen, the fantastic project coordinator here at Jaspis, who has um, uh, worked uh, with me on this in the best way possible. And as well, the graphic designer, Aron Kulander Östling, who has made this program, which you can find outside in the bar. So, Grant, I'll hand over to you. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Lisa. Like Lisa, I prepared a sort of written statement, which I will read. Um, we start with this question of how to practice internationalism, in part by stepping back from the institutional structures that designate and disseminate art internationally, to consider practices that point towards alternative ways to inhabit the art world, as it is, as well as to imagine change. Of course, as the organizers of this conference, we come here in part on behalf of our institutions, which themselves have an international remit or function, and at some level because of a desire to transform these institutions. But we are also present on behalf of ourselves as curators who have practices that predate and exceed our institutional roles, as well as our particular local situations. However, working as a curator at the Institute of International Visual Arts, INNOVA, I'm privileged to be able to cite and refer back to another conference, which took the international as its problematic. This conference was called Towards a New Internationalism. It took place at the Tate Gallery in 1994, and it marked the inauguration of INNOVA, um, a new institution that had, that had emerged out of the pressure brought upon the establishment by black artists in Britain, and which promised to introduce a new dialogue concerning internationalism to the UK. This conference brought together a distinguished group of artists and academics from around the world, including from China, India, Tanzania, Mexico, Nigeria, Japan, Britain and the United States, with speakers such as Rashid Arin, Gita Kapoor, Hal Foster, Alu Ogwibe, Jimmy Durham, and Huhan Ru, amongst others. There were many insightful presentations and much disagreement. But what all of the conference papers that I, had, that I read had in common was the intention to define, even in a provisional way, for that moment, what a new internationalism should and could mean. Of course, many of them focused in particular on the need to break with the dominant Western-centric notion of internationalism, which prevailed in the art world, as it does in many fields. Perhaps unsurprisingly, given that the conference was taking place at the Tate, and that its function was to introduce a conceptual frame for a new institution dedicated to international art, the speakers frequently turned to critical aesthetic practice as a way to reimagine internationalism, because, as Jean Fisher put it, art's singular vision and ability to test the image of the world. This is a quote from Jean Fisher. The heterogeneous field of art, as it is practiced internationally, was summoned by the speakers on many occasions as providing a not insignificant alternative to the mainstream. <clears throat> as testified to by Olu Ogwibe, who described this field as a formidable culture of alternatives, and by Gita Kapoor, who point, pointed to the strong contrary motivations at work everywhere across the globe, by actors whose disposition is not to fit in too smoothly, but to be oddly, sometimes precariously positioned in the national as also the international. And perhaps it is possible that this assembly provides an opportunity to take this thread from the 1994 conference and make it a more, more explicit point of discussion. Reading through the conference papers, it was interesting to reflect on the changes which have taken place during the 20 intervening years, ranging from the regular use of postmodern as a term, which helped to frame the debate, but which has all but disappeared in, in contemporary current discourse, to the rapidly changing geography of art, 
and the rapid expansion of a particular notion of contemporary art that has occurred in the past decades. This latter bears out the observation made by Kapoor in her paper, speaking at that time of the emergence of the Asian tigers, but in terms that could apply to India today, of how suddenly capitalism brings cultural internationalism into effect. This cultural internationalism brought suddenly into effect by capitalism grows apace, and if some of the parameters have changed, what hasn't is the need to question the term internationalism in order to see in whose interest it is practiced, to think about how we ourselves are encouraged or coerced to work internationally and to seek out alternatives. In addressing these questions, we are lucky to have present for this assembly an inspiring group of artists and thinkers who can help provide us with terms, concepts, and concrete examples we might need to think through these questions. From reading existing texts and abstracts from this group of participants, um, these concepts and terms already include the idea of an errant cosmopolitanism that is unexpected in its distribution and impact. Friendship as a form of relation which can produce unscripted lines of affiliation between partners of difference. And feminism as a practice of translation that exceeds national, cultural or linguistic foreclosure. We also have prototypes of lateral thinking, imagination, formal experimentation, political inventiveness, and pragmatic self-organization that suggest a range of methods and tools. As well, uh, an archive of historical practice, um, which practices which have run counter to pre-given concepts of internationalism that have too often followed a Western paradigm and a homogenous narrative of global modernism. Finally, as Lisa pointed out in her introduction, it feels important to mention that this is the start of a research process. And so we open the discussion without proposing an immediate application. But nevertheless, the imperative to undertake this research comes from a dissatisfaction and critique of the larger institutional structures that we inhabit. And which shape the art world, and from the wish that with, our, with the collaboration of artists, we can point towards different ways of transforming this. Um, I'd just like to express thank to so Lisa, who worked very hard on uh, hosting and organizing. Uh, Likewise. <laughs> <laughs> so Grant, you said the, the large institutional structure that we inhabit and Casco is the smallest <laughs> uh, and most flexible and then um, but the, the oldest <laughs> I realized only yesterday so we were set up in 1990 and the Yaspis 96 and Iniva 94 but uh, unlike these two other institutions the international is wasn't uh, ever top agenda. <laughs> it was rather a condition in which we uh, operate. So it's matrix for our practice or the program. So we work internationally. That means like work with the artists from different countries and also presentation abroad. Uh, our publics are international and also working with uh, agenda that can be shared internationally like a uh, question of governance, immigration, and social relations, self-organization, etc., etc., and uh, very conscious participation in international art discourse. So um, the fact that I am from South Korea, <laughs> uh, I came to the Netherlands like nine years ago um, to take like seven months course for curatorship and then I start working in the Netherlands and, and I'm not immigrant. And the fact that I'm running a Casco doesn't mean that I invite work with Asian artists or dealing with question that is very important for Asians. So that already quite um, uh, differentiate <laughs> what we do from Yaspis and Iniva. And on top of that, we, in our work, the working locally and in community is very important. 
but uh, certain shift uh, has been happening for last few years uh, in two ways. One is um, kind of intensification of international relations that um, somehow came up here as a necessity. That um, so. Um, the practice in international is subsidized by European Union culture program, and they require you to gather at least three institutions to work together. Therefore, we are. <laughs> uh, and, and as Casco, we took part in so far like four different network cluster. It's an organization, eight different organization working very locally embedded way, subsidized by European Culture Foundation. <laughs> and a circular fact with a showroom and objective exhibition, again, uh, supported by European Union Culture Program. <laughs> um, and there is agenda very clear, uh, how many artists, how many works are circulated, and how often the exchange take place. And um, so that's one, something to reflect on if we are not merely serving the yeah, European Union agenda. And second situation is um, <coughs> this agitation between identity politics and non-identity politics, um, which um, partially it could be generational or it could be about the time in a sense that like uh, difference or identity uh, kind of function as a capital, your asset, and you can sell and then you can let it circulate it. So personally, I had a very strong resist resistance to me being a core Korean curator or working with Korean artists and uh, maybe like first two years of Costco, I did my best to uh, avoid that label uh, in press release or wherever. Um, and um, so I think it brings certain com complexity um, in terms of uh, questioning about internationalism. So there are certain like propositions and direction that we wanted to take on. Uh, I just wanted to like share a brief sketch, which is more for like further exploration and critical investigation. So first, um, kind of like main suggestion is separating international, internationalism from the international, which sounds simple, but in fact, separating, I think, creating uh, condition for us to go on our research. And uh, second is uh, institutionalization. I don't know, you may disagree, uh, agree, <laughs> but institutionalization or what seems to be impossible to institutionalize. Um, so uh, there comes like several notions and that's why also we are so glad that uh, Lila Gandhi is here today um, um, where she speaks about effective communities that were like downsided or neglected by official politics. So um, notion of practice in contrast to production, the meaning that understanding practice as a way of living, is it possible to bring that into like system or discourse? And second is uh, occupancy. Can we understand occupancy as a condition for practice? Um, well, this occupancy is very much inspired by occupied movement, but also our visit to Dakar. And I think at one point, we should uh, bring our experience of visiting and having time with artist uh, Isa Sam, who's not here today, which isn't surprising in relation to his occupancy. Um, and then uh, unlikely connectivity, which I think Grant already mentioned, that all, all the artists who, uh, who are joining today think have very singular example of uh, connectivity that is not written anywhere in any history book or um, contemporary like uh, social text. And the final one is friendship-based alliances. Again, I think Grant uh, mentioned and 
we also going to learn more about it uh, or think about it through Lila. So we are um, investigating, <laughs> interrogating uh, different forms of internationalism and then we also spoke about, about it would be nice to find new names for that. So in Dakar we, we learn about like parallelism, so you don't really um, necessarily uh, like directly connect it, but in fact you share a lot in parallel or like planetarism <laughs> by Gayatari Spivak. So there are lots of things and it would be great to also get your feedback and your ideas. Okay, so just uh, to say quickly a bit about the day today. <clears throat> we will uh, proceed now with uh, two presentations, one by Ultra Red and the other one by Michel Dizon, uh, followed by a joint uh, time for questions and discussion. Then we'll have a short break and uh, at 5.45 or thereabouts, uh, Lila Gandhi will give her lecture. And uh, we have invited artist Petra Bauer to respond to Lila's presentation. Um, and after that, again, uh, open for questions and discussion. At seven, there will be a bit of a longer break where we will serve some soup and refreshments. And at 7.30, uh, David Medella will um, give his uh, presentation, followed by a discussion between Grant David and uh, Adam Nankervis. So I would like to invite Ultra Red to come up on the stage. Thank you.